What's up everybody, it's Henry with Conley Coaster Designs coming back with another video. This is not a Dorney Park 2024 video, this is actually possibly the future direction of where this channel will go, um, post Dorney Park 2024 and outside of all the No Limits creations. Talking about current events in the, uh, in the roller coaster community, in the theme park community, and, uh, I debated on this one. I didn't know if I was gonna make a video on this, and, um, it's a pretty big topic, both in the GP and enthusiast circles. Um, what happened yesterday at Carowinds, uh, specifically with Fury 325. Um, and I'm not going to make any speculation here. I'm not going to speculate on what caused the what we saw. And if you haven't seen what I'm talking about, you'll see in a second here. I'm not going to attempt to pinpoint blame. I'm not going to attempt to do any of that. I am honestly going to be waiting to see where this goes. But I decided I wanted to make this video because obviously there are a lot of people that are concerned with the safety of roller coasters and the safety of amusement park rides in general. And this just raises those concerns yet again. So I wanted to maybe take a couple seconds here to talk about it, to talk about what could come of this, um, how long we could see Fury 325 down for, what we could potentially see happen with it, I'm not going to dwell too far into what could have caused it. I'm not, again, not going to dwell too far into who's to blame or, or any of that. But for those of you who haven't seen it, um, this pretty large crack appeared on one of the support columns for the track on Fury 325. If I understand correctly, this is after the second airtime hill or, sorry, after the first airtime hill into a turn, if I'm understanding correctly, um, there is a significant crack straight through the support. Um, it looks to have originated at a weld. Um, again, that's speculation right there. Um, but based upon what you can see in the pictures, and there's various pictures out there, it appears that it did originate in a weld. Um, this crack is a significant crack. It is a significant failure of a roller coaster's um, r track system. It is a significant failure of a machine, um, and as such, it's probably going to be treated um, very similar to what we saw with El Toro, with King the Ka, the through the various things that it's gone through, Top Thrill Dragster, um, and what we've recently seen on Top Thrill Dragster that led to what's happening currently with that ride, uh, Volcano and countless other rides out there. When they have a major failure, these rides get shut down. They get heavily investigated, both to make sure they are 100% um, structurally in, uh, in this, the structural integrity is 100%, and two, to determine what went wrong in order to cause something like this to appear. Um, <clears throat> this crack is not something that apparently appeared yesterday. As far as uh, I can tell through digging and through what's been talked about on, you know, park fans and various other sites, uh, it's been there for at least a week. Um, and it is a, it was a small crack, um, hard to pick up. I mean, people who had taken photos and videos at the park had captured it and didn't even know it. That's how small of a crack it was. Um, but it looks like it did spread um, straight across the support uh, structure, and it um, through the stresses that are, in, are put on this ride, it finally just sheared. There is a video of the train rolling through this section of track. You can visibly watch the entire broken piece move with the track while the column stands still. So it is 100% sheared through. Now, again, I'm not going to speculate on who's the blame. There could be anything from engineering issues. This could be construction issues. This could be manufacturing issues. This could be maintenance issues. This could be any of those things combined, or this could be something 100% unrelated to any of those. This could be related to the environment, I, you know, deficiencies in the steel, you name it. There's a lot of possibilities here. And there's too many things for us as enthusiasts to, to, look at that we won't be able to look at so we can't definitively point at what this is um what we can say is it is at least a testament to the strength and engineering of a b&m coaster um i've seen multiple people today posting that b&m coasters uh, they're afraid to ride any roller coaster let me say that at this point 
Um, they've seen the crack. They've seen it go, the train rolling through that section. They've seen it move. And they're very concerned to ride any roller coaster. And while I, you know, if I was not the enthusiast I am, I would probably understand that. The other thing to understand is the train made it through. The train made it through. No one was injured. The train didn't derail. There was no catastrophic failure of the entire structure. And based upon what I've been reading from people that were at Carowinds yesterday and rode the roller coaster yesterday, they didn't feel anything different. The ride rode how it's supposed to. It, it rode how it was designed. So it's a testament to the over-engineering that is Bollinger and Mabillard. It is a testament to the strength of their track system. That thick spline that they use, that supported that structure as that train rolled through it. And these are heavy trains. Uh, I don't know the exact weight, but you know I've heard numbers tossed around, uh, two-ton trains, stuff like that. It's rolling through that point at easily 60, upper 60s, low 70 mile per hour region. There's a lot of stress on that point in the track, and it survived. No one was hurt, which means that the design and the engineering is 100% confirmed to be some of the best out there. B&Ms are top-tier top roller coasters. They always will be, they always have been, they will continue to be. That is why parks spend 20 plus million dollars on Bollinger and Mabillard roller coasters. Bollinger and Mabillard, they have, you, of course, contract through Claremont Steel, and that's their manufacturer of their steel products. Um, based upon everything that I can read out there about Claremont Steel, they are top notch when it comes to inspecting their metals, when it comes to inspecting welds, when it comes to manufacturing in general, they're top notch. So those two companies have an almost impeccable ride safety history. Um, no, comp uh, no major failures on any one of their roller coasters they've designed or built. No major f uh, injuries, no major deaths, nothing. So this is the first of this type of failure that we are seeing on a Bollinger and Mabillard roller coaster. And with them having countless coasters throughout the world, that is a testament to them. Now, Dorney, or, yeah, sorry. Um, now, Cedar Fair has been being criticized recently over their maintenance standards. And, um, yes, there are a lot of things that can be said about that. Um, there are lots of people that talk about the maintenance issues that led to Top Thrill Dragster doing what it did. There are a lot of people talking about, um, back in the day, what led to Volcano's many issues being maintenance-related. Um you can't necessarily pinpoint this on maintenance. It's in a part of the track where you would really need the, co the track inspection tool, the big coaster ball, like hamster ball on, a, on wheels, to ride that track on a daily basis. Now, there is an argument that they possibly could have seen it from the ground. Um, I can't testify to that. None of us can testify to that from where they walked the track was it something that they would have caught is it something that they would have been looking for i mean it's it's unheard of supports cracking on a b&m roller coaster it's unheard of supports cracking on practically any roller coaster out there so their their daily inspections based upon what i'm understanding and why i've learned uh just in leading up to this video they concern themselves with the high stress parts, the parts that are more likely to break, the parts that are more likely to wear out. That's their daily checks because of obviously that's what you want to keep tabs on. That's what most likely will fail and that's what most likely could lead to a catastrophic failure resulting in serious injury or death. So saying that it's a maintenance failure for not inspecting that portion of the track structure, especially a support structure that's, I don't know, 70, 80 feet in the air, uh, if not more, I don't know if you can really pinpoint blame on them. Uh, I saw people tossing around the actual construction. That could be a possible issue. Did they place footers slightly out of whack? Um, we can't confirm that either. But what we will see come from this, and this is the point I want to get to, Bollinger and Mabillard is well known for putting out service bulletins on their roller coaster products. In fact, if you go on Google and you search for them, you can find roller coaster bullets or service bulletins on various roller coasters at Six Flags Great Adventure, built by Bollinger and Mabillard, where they called out points where there could be cracks and stress fractures. 
and how to check for them and if they are there how to repair them and i can almost guarantee even though this is the only standing giga of its kind um they will more than likely send out a service bulletin for many of their bigger hypers and ensure that they are checking their bigger hyper coasters as well as other portions of this ride to verify that this isn't a problem that's happening on other pieces of uh, support. Beyond that, this ride will not open anytime soon. Um, I don't want to go against people out there that are saying it's going to open within a few weeks, but I don't see that happening. Um, just the investigation alone into what caused this is going to take weeks if not months then the inspection of the rest of the track structure the rest of the support system the rest of everything that has to do with this tr this roller coaster that will take weeks if not months then you have to engineer a solution the solution might be building the same column the solution might be building a more complex support structure to sustain the forces and weights that are being applied there and this could result in other track supports being re-engineered as well. We don't know if this is a one-off thing. Are there other supports on this roller coaster that are cracked? If they are, then those are going to possibly have to be re-engineered. Re so there's a solid chance that we will not see Fury 325 open for the rest of Carowind season. It probably won't open again until next season. And even if they were able to check everything fast do an investigation fast the regulatory authorities that certify these rides are probably going to drag their butts on this one and ensure that every little detail has been checked before they even sign off on this ride's opening for re uh for new operation but the one thing that should be known and should be understood is bollinger and mavillard claremont steel carowinds and therefore cedar fair and the regulatory authorities are going to go over this coaster with fine tooth comb. If there are any deficiencies, any issues in this coaster, they will probably be repaired before this thing even reopens. And yes, it will reopen. This coaster cost Carowinds and Cedar Fair north of $20 million. They are not going to tear it down over this. No one died. No one was injured. The issue that arose, they found before anybody could be injured and by they i of course have to credit a park guest who noticed it and reported it but in the end they shut down the ride and they stopped this before it could have became anything big so this roller coaster is not going to get torn down it's not like fury 325 has rode its last ride across those tracks it will be back but it will be back after there is a lot of time put into investigating this and then figuring out a solution so i just want to hop on and put my piece in about this and also hopefully set a course for the channel moving forward after dorney park 2024 is all said and done uh we'll be back at the park tomorrow hopefully we're going to see some new construction out there i've heard that there is an, uh some more work being done on the facade of the new haunt structure it looks pretty cool i can't wait to get some video of that and uh <clears throat> maybe there's gonna be a track on scene maybe there's gonna be some supports on site could have some fun here maybe we'll actually have a really cool coaster update uh construction update for you coming this week uh anyway as always uh keep peaceful we're a niche community we're a bunch of nerds who love something that most people just hop on and ride whereas we kind of want to know how they work and everything behind them so show love to one one another and i'll catch you on the next video with conley coaster designs my name is henry